makeup people it is to shower and politics and fashion here today with my favorite video to film every year and it is my 2022 wish list it's not my favorite video because i plan to get everything on this list that would be more of a checklist and i don't see this in that way it's more because it is aspirational and it also helps to keep me in check girl because i will be out here spending like a drug dealer and it, you know my name is not big meech nor Larry Hoover. We not whipping work hallelujah out here, girl. So we got to rain it on in and shop with intention. Leave the song reference down below. Um, but the primary way I do that is to really sit down and give myself the benefit of thinking about what am I missing? What would I love to have? What might like special pieces be that I want to treat myself to? And so I initially filmed this video. This is my, my second time filming this. Um, and I just lied throughout the whole thing, girl. I kept being like, oh, it's not a lot I don't want this year. I don't want a lot this year. And, and I thought to myself, why am I lying to these people? Nobody put me on program to tell a lie. Um, and, and, and I think it's because there are categories of things that I want this year that I'll get into very soon. Um, and not maybe a lot of specificity like I had had in previous years. I'll make sure I link 2021's video down below. But without any more rambling, girl, let's just go ahead and get into the video. Before we get started, let me share with you what I am wearing today. Uh, the hat, while it may serve an aesthetic purpose, is also because I need a haircut horribly. But anyway, uh, the hat is by Guren Brothers. This is on Ray's hat. It's a size small, and I consider myself to be someone who has a small head, but I guess not as small as I thought as far as their sizes are concerned. So you may want to size up if you're not using your exact head measurements, but Guren does exceptional hats. If they still have the brown fedora, I'll make sure either I link this one down below or some of my faves. My sweater is by a company called Amure. I grabbed this from Intermix last year. Absolutely, absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite sweaters in my wardrobe. I don't think they have this colorway anymore, but they do have new ones that I will link down below. I'm wearing on the bottom just a simple skirt by H&M, which y'all have seen a bunch of times. It's tan and it's ribbed. Jewelry is very simple today, as you can see, aside from my earrings that in my first hole are by uh, Gypsy by Nature. It's a black owned brand. I'll make sure that I also link them down below. Always you all check the description box if you are curious about what I am wearing. I do my best, even if I don't share with you what I'm wearing, I link what I am wearing down below. Great time to also remind you to subscribe to the channel and give this video a big thumbs up. Let's start the list with ready to wear girl. Um, I'm going to tell you now ready to wear and jewelry are probably the two biggest categories that I'm looking at this year. I feel like my handbag collection is in a place that I'm happy with it. One or two exceptions that I'll share with y'all in just a bit. Um, Lord knows girl I don't need no more shoes like that is my weakness and so designer ready to wear is what i really want to dip my toe even further into just because of the aesthetic there are a few designers that i'm absolutely head over heels with including black designers but first up is jockmas because you know sis may already have <laughs> She may already have her first Jockman's piece of the year. And it is the Uzco Balloon Sleeve Cutout Cotton Blend Dress. Now, designer brands are having great sales this time of year. It's after Christmas. They want to kind of clear out older inventory. And ironically, I had actually been looking at this Jockman's piece since it was on the runway. Literally, it was one of the looks that I saved in the Vogue runway app. So when I saw it on sale, girl... I said, God is blessing me right now. I have to have it. And I had also just made my wish list for the year. So I'm going to actually try it on for y'all. Obviously put a picture up, but I also want you to see it on. Now it is a little tight in the hips. And so depending on when this video goes up, I don't know if you're going to be seeing the altered version or not. Um, but I would rather try to get the hips let out than get the waist taken in in a bigger size. Jocklemus is notoriously small, y'all. This is a size 40 and I think I need a 42 in anything that is not a top from them. Um, but... 
I love the designer. I think that his pieces are edgy. They are innovative. And this Uzku dress is chef's kiss I think a great way to start 2022 the color is amazing the fabric is lightweight it's going to be really really nice for spring as well I can wear it now with a pair of knee boots and a wool coat but I also go into the spring with a pair of really cute sandals um I tried it on with my new micro Fendi back that I got myself for Christmas it's just a vibe then it's cut out in the back I mean these small details, the balloon to the, the volume to the sleeve, like this is what we're paying for when we buy designer pieces. You're not going to find this kind of look at your run of the mill big box store, you know, fast fashion brand. And so for me, that is one of the reasons why I want to invest in more designer ready wear this year, because I just really feel like it is where so many of these design houses, where their aesthetic speaks the most, it is through their ready wear. And that is so, so true for Jacquemus. Now, another Jacquemus piece, because Preciano. Uh, that I have my eyes on and this is also on sale but we gonna we gonna wait we're, we're we we gonna wait I, I'm actually in a no spend month in January okay so this one is still on sale we're gonna go ahead and hop out here and get that Sierra ribbed knit mini dress she bad she bad the little small jockness like right here and it's in gold and y'all know how I feel about gold shoulder clavicle it's a midi length which i love they also make something very similar in a sweater that i've been looking very closely at uh but with a strapless bra and then you just got them the booby just gonna sit up high this is delicious it is delicious and then you put it on with um baby blue or you do it with a nice Kelly green and you color block this thing down. That is disrespectful. Definitely have that Sierra rib dress on the list for 2022. Next up, let's go for Dries Van Notten. Let's 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 do it, friends. Let's let's Dries is that dude. Forget what you heard. Dries is that dude. And if you are not following Amanda London Girl of NYC over on IG then you are missing an artist in her prime because the way she makes Dries Van Notten pieces come alive is just disrespectful. There are levels in life to what we do and and with Amanda and the Dries pieces that she styles I just want to touch the hem of her garment literally touch the hem of her garment. Now here's what I'm looking at from Dries Van Notten it is the striped sheer pants classic classic with a good old leotard or a good old pair of bloomer good old pair of bloomers on girl please and you see how they styled styled it with this long pink shirt so it gives you this sex appeal but you're not giving everything out in the back as well i think that's so so clever these pants are it now, one thing I do know is that Dries Van Notten uh, tends to go on sale in department stores. And so this is something I would definitely wait for the price to be reduced on. But I just feel like if I had these in my wardrobe, I would literally keep them forever. Like, what special occasion could you not see yourself wearing a pair of striped sheer pants with your butt hanging out? Give them some cheek. What, what occasion would these not be fantastic, okay? So we're gonna definitely put those on the list for 2022. One more piece of Dries Van Notten, y'all, are these uh, silver cracked leather tall boots. I am fully aware that I do not need these. I'm, don't even say it to me. I'm well aware that these is the last pair of shoes that I need. I already have an issue with shoes, with collecting shoes. But look at that slight curve to the heel. Did you catch that? Look at that almond, that almond toe. The cracked silver, like that, that leather almost has like a cracked, crinkly finish to it. it 
They also make them in a couple other colors, like in brown and in green. Those are okay, but I think it's something about this material that stands out the most. And because my wardrobe is so full of neutrals, I would just love to have these with just like a oversized black sweater, some black tights, girl. And that is all you need. Literally let the boots do the talking. So that's the only pair of shoes I have on my wish list this year. Again, they would have to go on sale, but if they do, if and when they do, these will have to be mine. Next up, y'all, is an item from Christopher John Rogers. Christopher, we love you. Black luxury designer. I'm parallel out here in these streets, okay? Creating art and calling it fashion. This just happens to be his medium, but it could be anything. That is how attuned this brother's eye is. Um, now, I mentioned London Girl NYC. She wears a lot of his pieces. A couple of my other faves have pieces from him. I was stalking something by him a few years ago. Stupidly let it kind of go by the wayside. Should not have done that because that piece was on a remarkable sale. I think it was like a top that Blair EDB or someone had worn. It was a pink, like, kind of voluminous top. Um, that piece sold out, could never find it again. And since then, what I have realized is that Christopher is up there. Yeah, you're gonna pay a good little, you're gonna pay a good little coin. Um, including these panel silk satin wide leg pants. I saw these on somebody recently. It may have been the sister who owns um, the McMullen Boutique. Uh, either way, I think she's selling them on her website. So if they still have them, I will link them to give the black owned business, you know, their coin if you so choose to purchase them. If not, I know they are still available on like Netta Porter. They're over $2,000. It's a lot of money for some pants, girl. But you know what? Let me tell you something. I'm manifesting wealth in 2022. And if my coins look right and I can jump out here and do it, what could you tell me with these Christopher John Rogers pants on? And you already know how I would do it, girl. A little ritzy, a crop top, a nice, ooh, girl, put on a nice silver, a nice silver strappy sandal or a nice white sandal. But I think, I think we'll go metallic. A nice silver sandal. Hallelujah! All right, now let's hop over to Hanifa. Uh, Hanifa, I'm surprised I don't have anything by Hanifa. And her latest runway collection, I love so many of those pieces. The thing that I love the most, y'all, is this tube dress. And now on the, I think on the website, I envision it with the buttons in the front. But then I saw it over on IG and the buttons were in the back. And if you notice with the buttons being in the back, what that means is it has kind of like these almost rainbow, like arched seams. I just think that she really understands women's silhouettes. And the way that that kind of arches here is going to make your boobs kind of, you know, look a little kind of perched up. But then how it comes in on the side, it's going to make that waist look snatched. This in the color. She does delicious colors. So I need this. I absolutely need this. I need it for vacation. Where am I going? Who knows? It don't matter. I will create a trip. This is the Roxy Maxi Dress. Highly recommend. It is definitely on my list for this year. Now let's hop over to back, which I know a lot of people came here for, all right? Of course, I have a bag on the list this year. I actually have three, but I'm trying to figure out how I would prioritize them. So y'all let me know down below your thoughts. The first one I've talked to y'all about a bunch of times, and that is the Loewe Puzzle Bag. It's time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and because I don't want to pay full price for it, I have been very, very patiently waiting for it on the resale market or from the outlet. I feel like this is going to be my year. Me and the puzzle bag, we about to mati data. This is going to be the year that I really find the one that is for me. And I definitely know that I want to be multicolored. And what I'm drawn to is ones that are in warm colors and warm neutrals. Um, so your tan, your nude, um, black, 
white. I've seen these color combos a lot. I just have not found them at the price that makes me pull the trigger. The one that I found that was almost new, it was like 1600 and I noted I knew I should have just went ahead and got the bag and literally the next day it was gone. Um, and that's the best price I've seen it at. So now the question is, because you've seen it at such a great price, right? Do you continue to wait to find it at that price? Or do you jump out here and find another one? Um, I'm also looking at this one that is more of like a raffia print. Um, this actually is in the larger size. It's in what's considered medium, but it is the largest size in that bag. Um, and I like it. I just don't know how much I would truly wear it. That gives me more summer. And I had truly been like eyeing this bag for fall, winter. And so I would have to wrap my mind around what season now I would wear the bag the most. But either way, that's a long way of me saying First bag on the list is finally to get my freaking Loewe puzzle bag this year. And then I have two other bags that are on the list. Um, definitely not getting both of these, but I just want to hold space for them because this is the direction that I really want for my collection to go in. I feel like I have so many bags that are functional that serve the day-to-day -day purpose. I'm ready to start collecting pieces that are more like pieces of art. And this Landvin pencil box is it, girl. I saw this in person at the Landon Boutique in Aria in Vegas and fell in love with it. The size is perfect. The large cat that's kind of sprawled across the top of the bag that serves as a handle I think is so incredibly chic and unique. I mean you're wearing a little black dress you walk into the function with this and you're shutting everything down because she is a conversation piece. And then they had the nerve to juxtapose this kind of very um, avant-garde bag with the everyday vibe of a guitar strap. Mind is just absolutely blown, right? Like whoever thought of doing that is so bright because it is completely unexpected for the bag and it makes it more casual and, you know, something that you would feel like you could wear more every day um, if you chose to. Now, I wouldn't wear this down at the Kroger, but to each his own. I just think that the bag is almost something that just is so sculptural. I would love to just look at it on the shelf, okay? Uh, absolutely love that one. And then next is this white bag, the Serpenty bag, by my good old friends over at Bulgari. This is the Serpenty Forever top handle bag. And what I think that Bulgari does the best is this top handle silhouette. I was looking at, if you saw my Vegas vlog, you saw me looking at very similar bags to this um, at the boutique out there. Uh, I absolutely love Bulgari. Gari. I love their jewelry. I love their watches. I love their whole aesthetic. And again, another brand that I don't think gets the flowers that she deserves. And so this bag is so great because of that chunky gold, um, probably it's an additional strap, but that chain that's right in the front. Of course, the top handle, then that accordion style side that it has. It looks like it can hold, you know, all of your essentials. It's not a huge bag, but it's not teeny tiny either. It's just good. And it also has an additional strap that can be worn either shoulder or crossbody. And then I also love that gold of the serpent that's right there at the clasp that opens and closes the bag. Any kind of gold moment, chunky gold moment on a bag, y'all, I'm just going to go up for. And this one is good. This one is really, really good. I don't have anything this color in my collection either. Next up, y'all, is something a little bit different. Um, it is art. I absolutely love interior design and decor. Um, hopefully you all will get to see a little bit more of that as I start to produce more vlogs this year. Uh, but outside of fashion, my next artistic form that I love 100% is interior decor. And I think a great art piece really just anchors your home. I figured this out for sure, like cemented this <laughs> in... Um, I think last probably November when we got our Maline Barnett 
print. It's a limited edition print, one of three. Uh, we purchased that from her directly on her website. Uh, this is the uh, art piece is called A Doja. Absolutely, absolutely loved it ever since I saw Malene Barnett's home tour. Um, and I'll make sure I have a picture up so you can see it uh, in its glory, both in Malene's home and in mine. But we got it matted, we got it framed here locally. And as soon as we hung it up, it gave our entire home character, it gave it flavor. It just completely set the vibe. Like, when you walk into our home, you know who we are because of that piece. And I want art that speaks in that same way all throughout our home. Um, I'm in a relationship with an artist. Um, Ray's not a visual artist, but as an artist, she also appreciates art as well. And so we're looking at a few new pieces to incorporate into our collection this year. And to the degree that we can also start to collect pieces that are going to um, increase or appreciate in value, that would be great as well. We need to learn a little bit more about that um, but it's something that I'm really looking forward to in 2022. I'll give a shout out really quick to a few designers or a few artists that we're thinking a lot about. Uh, one is like pie in the sky girl. Like if I jump out here and have the best brand partnerships of the year, have the best consulting business of the year, then what I'm going to do is call up uh, Nina Chanel Abney and I'm going to say sis go ahead and Go ahead and go ahead and send me something over, okay? Because uh, she's demanding her coin and sis should. She is one of the most prolific artists, I think, of uh, of this current era. Um, I love everything she does. I love that many, many of her pieces also have a social justice or a justice-driven justice message behind them. Everything she does, she can do no wrong. No wrong. And I am excited to get my money together, okay? To accumulate the wealth necessary to own a piece by Nina Chanel Abney. Like, I am courting her work more than the Birkin or the Kelly. Like, a handbag will come. But investing in black art is it's a different level for me. Next up is Jamila Okpo. Think I'm saying her name right? This actually had a show here locally at a gallery and I missed it. Hate that I missed it. Hopefully she will show again very soon because I really, really want to see her work in person. I think the way that she depicts kind of the contemporary black woman is so amazing and she does it through this like silhouette style. Um, but you still know what she put in that. Like you, you still see the Bantu knots. Right, you still see kind of the marine sare print. Like you know what she's giving, um, and I think it would be really dope to have some of her work. Uh, and then the last artist is a woman named Shawnee Crow, who also goes by Crowzilla. Now her art form is surrounding black hair. She does a lot of actual like installations of black hair. Um, she actually was brought into the Hirshhorn here in D.C. on Ray Brother Inn for a big event called the Salon, and we had a chance to meet her and the way she talks about black hair as an art form it's just absolutely inspirational and so I find that I'm drawn to artists who take kind of the everyday experiences of a black womanhood of black personhood and they interpret them into an artistic and visually artistic art form and um Shawnee is just it. And I think her work is the most dynamic, large scale. And so we're hoping to get a very, very large print by her of one of her, her iconic prints very, very soon. Shawnee, call us, sis. Like, we, we've been trying to reach out. If you see this video, we got to have a piece by you. Uh, so Crozilla is the third artist that is uh, definitely aspirational and on our wish list for 2022. Now our last category is the jewelry and I think it probably helps to do these designers by uh, brand or these pieces by brand because I've been saving so many things girl we would be here all day but let me tell you which designers I am tracking and what I'm kind of thinking about and then we'll see how things kind of shake out because I do want to do an updated jewelry collection video very soon and so once I get my new piece you'll hear all about it in detail at that time but for now let's start with a brand that I haven't talked about before here and it is a black brand called Almasika. You welcome. You are welcome sis because when you see what I'm about to show you right now 
you are going to gag, okay? Black on pieces definitely, I think, have um, a nod to a cultural aesthetic. And so much of what they do is just fantastic. Yellow gold, their necklaces, this uh, Sagise Beachy Charm necklace is good. It reminds me um, of a comb, kind of that um, Ghanaian um symbol what is it called if I can think of it I'll put it up on the screen but that's what this reminds me of and you see this in multiple pieces including the Sagasse signet ring so good girl so so good they also make amazing cups and so I'm looking at this Berso Pave diamond open cuff is so so good that would be such a dope like stacking piece oh so good um and their take on a tennis bracelet do you see this this is what i'm talking about some of these brands these like big well-known luxury designers wish that they could i said van cleef who alhambra who Let's keep going. Outside of um, Masika is Masika. Um, and I talked about them before in a previous video about the luxury classics that it's time to replace. Um, and I just think that Masika is it, y'all. I absolutely love the Lucky Move necklace in all the colors, but especially the Malachite. And it comes in several sizes. Um, now, somebody once told me, they said, um, earrings and, and necklaces are for other people. Rings and bracelets are for you. And I think that's such a profound way of looking at jewelry because my bracelet and my ring, I get to see that all day, right? My necklace and my earrings, y'all are the ones that get to see that all day. So I'm trying to figure out who I want to bless. Do I want to bless the masses or do I want to bless me? Because a blessing indeed this jewelry is about to be, okay? Um, I'm leaning, honestly, I'll be honest with y'all, really towards something that's Malachite. I just absolutely love Malachite. And the larger Lucky Move necklace, it, it just has my name all over it. And the way that it is layered, I think, with my other pieces would just be absolutely delicious. Now, I do also like the Move Noe bangle. I, I think she's cute. This is cute. Um, but I'm pretty happy with my bracelet stack right now. So... It really is rings and necklaces, if I'm being honest with you, that probably are what, what I'm leaning most towards. Another brand, speaking of rings, is Mateo, a black-owned brand. Uh, Mateo New York is it, and his initial rings are so good. They are in, I think, they're like diamond framed, and then the initial is in diamonds, and then the larger stone is quartz, and it's also a gold ring. Uh, it comes in several different cuts. I love the emerald cut, but the one that is horizontal because I do have very like long fingers I think the bigger the ring girl the better and the way this quartz is cut is just so interesting I haven't seen it in person I would love to uh, but absolutely love Mateo and everything that he does bruh is it the other jewelry designer that I think is just making some serious waves and I found them just scrolling one night on Net-A-Porte is State Property what they're laying down over there we're picking up okay um it's just on a different level i think i might have woken on ray up out of her sleep to show her these pieces and she was like girl if you don't leave me tf <laughs> but i was shook it i was shook girl look at this ring It's almost like a dome and it's open in the center, but then it's like concave the way that the, it's, it's shit. That's what I'm saying. I can't even describe the damn ring. And I love how they put it on the middle finger because it's just so substantial. Uh, have y'all been watching just like that? 
I told Henri the other day, I said, I feel like the character that Nicole Ari Parker is playing is Mackenzie's mama. And what I am so moved by with the way that they have styled that character, which I think is absolutely phenomenal, is Sis's jewelry. Like it, it is just all so eye catching. And that's what I feel like this ring would give. Like, imagine me. Ima just, I'm gonna set the scene for you. In those Christopher John Rogers pants, showing up to the function. Again, I'm wearing a crop top. Black Aritzia. I have this state property ring on my middle finger, keeping it simple everywhere else. And I also have that pencil box with the cat sprawled across it in gold etched by Lenny Vin. Everybody needs to go home. Like, you know how, like, people will, like, when they pull the fire alarm? I, I would be the metaphorical fire alarm walking into the function. Everybody exit. Get out of my way. I am a walking piece of art coming into this establishment. It is just, it's sick. Now, another one that I also really like is, I don't think this one has an actual name. Maybe it does, but I didn't save it, but it'll definitely be on the screen. Is this one that has the diamonds running down the middle and then that emerald cut diamond in the center. And what's so interesting about it is that when you see it close up on her finger, you can't tell this by just looking at the ring. It almost looks like that center is floating. And I also really like that it's outlined in black. I don't know if that's enamel or if that's onyx. Hopefully for that price, it's probably um, also a natural material or a gemstone. It comes in silver, it comes in gold, but we, we, we're going to need that in gold. Um, two rings from state property that I would absolutely, absolutely love. And that is it, good people. That is my wish list for the year 2022, our Lord AD. Uh, again, this is a wish list, not a checklist. So we'll see how things shake out this year. If you were not already, make sure you're following me over on Instagram to see what I may pick up, but also daily doses of style and self-care inspiration. And I will see you good people cross the internet. Peace.